Well, hello there. Oh, hey, Stella. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. What are you guys up to? We're just hanging out. I'm just looking at Shaylin's phone. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to see you. Yeah. I mean, are you guys free for 73 questions by any chance? Yeah. It sounds good to me. Okay. So I have an idea. I'm not too coordinated, so I don't feel like I can ask you the questions and film at the same time because I don't want to trip. What if you guys ask each other the questions? Perfect. Does that I'm work? Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. let's do it. You guys lead me wherever you want to go. All right. Let's well, so, Suresh, I have a question for you. The first question I want to ask you is, basketball at the OMAC or at Gano? Basketball at the OMAC, for sure. Gano has those double rims. And I can't All right. All right. I see you're here. You're a leader of effective altruism at Brown. Why is that important to you, if it is? You see, we think very intuitively, but doing good isn't the most intuitive thing. And so using logic, using research and evidence-based reasoning to do good and find ways that are not the most intuitive for us, that's something that's very important to me. I'm into biosecurity policy. So that was actually through effective altruism. So I was reading about how easy it is for someone to start a pandemic with the synthetic bio we have today. Yeah. And a high schooler can actually go into their school's lab, make some synthetic DNA. Really? If that DNA happens to be of a sequence that's not safe, it gets released and the start a pandemic. Which is kind of scary. That is very scary. I'm glad people like you are interested. Watch the Just seal. Save us all. Oh, watch the seal. Don't want to get pregnant. Or not that <laughs> What's the biggest surprise you've had? Um, so last week we had a B Lab social. And it was called Board Game Night. So you know, I thought it would be casual. I walked into the Nelson Center. Next thing I know, I see the ghost of Jason Harry. <laughs> Jason from that 2037. Was, that was so scary. <laughs> that was. I almost beat my pants. I fell out of my chair almost. <laughs> What are three things you can't live without? Shaylin, Abby, and Estella. <laughs> See, this is why this is why I love him. This is why he's so lovable. What's your biggest fear in life? Um, let's see. Oh, Voldemort from Harry Potter. Sometimes I go to sleep, and I don't know if Voldemort's just gonna pop out of nowhere and hit me with a Cruciatus curse. All right, yeah, that scares me. His nose also creeps me out. It's interesting you choose Cruciatus. You know there are three unforgivable curses, right? Yeah, the Imperi Imperius Imperiatus curse. And then Vada Kedavra. Yeah, Vada Kedavra. That one's that one's the worst one. Yeah, that one's bad. <laughs> At least you die right away. Yeah, that one yeah. you die. And Imperius, you, you're kind of like, you don't even know what you're doing. Cruciatus, Cruciatus you get tortured. Cruciatus is bad. Yeah. That one... Yeah. What's your favorite app? Um, I think I like this app called the Forest app. So it helps you stay productive. What you basically do is you can't go on your phone. You click plant a tree and for however many minutes it'll plant a tree on the app. And eventually as you build up and accumulate these trees, you can cash it in for cooler trees or you can plant a tree in the real world. What's a really? cooler tree? Um, there's a lot of different trees. There's like a celestial tree. There are different designs of trees. Um, I don't know. There's there's a lot of trees that are like based in Japan, like the cherry blossom. Like oh. fancier trees that look cooler. The cherry blossom is really nice. Yeah. I like the um, tri-colored birch tree. Mm. I don't know if they have that on the app, but okay. that we'll see. Um, let's see. What's a book that everyone should read? Go this way. Um, so there's this book called The Last Lecture, and it's about a professor who has cancer and he knows he's going to die at the end of the year around. And so he gives this last lecture to his students, um, and basically it summarizes everything he's learned about life and everything he's thinking about in his last days. Um, the professor's name is Randy Posh, and he wrote the book. That's really cool. And he actually gave that lecture. I 
need to watch that. That reminds me of uh, that book about that neurosurgeon, Thin Air. Thin Air? Yeah. Is that, uh, I haven't actually read it, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> I need to read both of those. something at the end of the day um, you know walking out of b-lab it's not always tangible venture progress that we have but if I feel like I learned something valuable and if I feel happy that I learned it I think that's success wow. he's just the best <laughs> Dark chocolate, if you're in the mood for dark chocolate. But otherwise, I think milk is easier to combine. Mm. Actually, no, it's actually, I'll take it back. Milk is kind of nice. <laughs> Hershey's, Hershey's, right? So easy. Um, stairs or elevator? Stairs. Except on my face. It's <laughs> someone's good hit in the gym. Yeah. Uh, skill you're working on, Master. So I haven't actually started on working on this skill, but I want to learn how to do a backflip. Oh my. Um, it would be useful, it would look cool, and I could do it for my dance team. I like how you started that by telling us you haven't learned yeah. that because you wanted to see that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sneaky. I'm just I will not do that for that. <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, best compliment you've ever received. My friend told me that my beard is that made my day. Once a week, once every two weeks. But the barber, the barber I go to, you know, his name's Nino, and he's he used to be on Thayer, moved to Princeton, wow. but he is he's wonderful. That's my dance team. Yeah. What is something that recently been to? Um, so last week was the ESPYs, which are like the sports awards, I guess. And there is a, at the end, there's this award called the Jimmy B Award. And it's for someone who persevered in the sports world through cancer. Mm. Um, and so there's always a speech. and. I guess like it's another like sort of last lecture type thing where it's like kind of sad that the person's like battling cancer. But this year it was like Dick Vitale, who's like a commentator for the NBA for the NCAA basketball. Yeah. Um, and he just gave a speech about persevering. Um, every time it's like listening to unique stories and getting motivation in different ways. It's just it really moves you, and I always love watching it. Yeah, and I think it's cool because it's in the sports world, and like I love following sports, and, like the connection to basketball, connection to like just him talking about every day seeing these young athletes work hard, yeah. and seeing that it's it's not necessarily about the sport, it's what what you do outside the sport, right? Um, and then how you can connect to that with his battle with cancer was pretty inspirational. I'm gonna have to watch that one too. Yeah. Uh, first celebrity crush. <laughs> Selena Gomez. Uh -oh. <laughs> you were the first Selena not to say Gomez. Emma Watson. I was. I loved to watch Wizards of Waverly Place as a kid. Yes. I see. That was my favorite. That show. was a I really good Selena. movie. Alex was my favorite character. <laughs> um, I was the first not to say Emma Watson. Yeah. Everyone and literally else almost Watson. everyone else said Emma Watson. Really? Wow. <laughs> It's my brother. Uh, I feel like so, that's a very brown thing. <laughs> yeah, you know Emma Watson. I mean, it's hard not to say Emma Watson. There's all the other. Yeah. Um. So, B 
Lab is giving us the energy to consistently work on our venture. First of all, there's a workspace. We yeah. love the Nelson Center. It's so fancy and having swipe access nonstop throughout the summer and snacks is amazing. <laughs> snacks are big. Snacks yeah, snacks are, big. are very important. Um, and then also the energy provided by B Lab staff, um, the other cohort members. It's it's like an entrepreneurial spirit that I had never seen anywhere else before. And you know, me being a STEM guy, you being a STEM guy, I don't know if you've seen that kind of energy in the STEM world, but the entrepreneurial energy is definitely different from anything else I've seen before. And so B Lab, you know, the mentorship, Jason Harry, wonderful guy. <laughs> Love the shout outs. Um, Estella. Estella, of course. <laughs> Sheila, Tori, Minnie, <laughs> you saved me, yeah. But everyone, everyone does so much, and yeah, I'm very thankful for you, Lab. Yeah. Well, that's it that I have for you, Serge. All right, my turn. And, okay, your turn. Yep. We're missing Abby right now. We're missing Abby. Abby, Abby will, will join us in over Zoom, Zoom afterwards. All right, Shailen. All right. Is there a reason why all the sports you like start with S? Squash, swimming, skiing, spike ball. <laughs> so I have a theory, but I'm kind of embarrassed to say the theory because it wasn't well received. <laughs> but think of, okay, this is the theory. <laughs> you know how languages and culture are like, influence one another. You know the theory, it's like the way we create our languages is defined by our culture. And then the language that is taught to us as a child in turn defines how we act, defines the culture. So in a sense, they define one another. Yeah. I think with names and like things people do or try to do, there's like a similar relationship. For example, like I had a gym teacher named Skills. Jim's, oh, his first name was Jim. Jim Skillings. Skills. Was his name. We just called him Skills. And then I had a music teacher named, or the music teacher is a bad example, but Jim Skillings. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, like, that name didn't influence him at all. Like, on Jim. <laughs> like, and like the best player in chess in the world, Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, Magnus, like, that had to inspire him to be the best at something. Like, come on. <laughs> so, like, in a similar sense, I mean, it's not perfect. My name starts with S, there's more to start with that, so maybe, like, subconsciously, like, it influenced what I chose to do, just, yeah. <laughs> I think you gotta prove that theory. I, I don't know if I believe it. I think it's a very weak theory, but that's the best answer I got. All right. What drew you to biomedical engineering? Biomedical engineering. So I think, you know, the reason I chose engineering is because I think I came to college really believing that you can only better on things, that we can always improve upon the way things are done. And I wanted to be involved in like innovation and creating a better world and better solutions to all the complex problems that exist out there. Mm -hmm. And engineering, which I thought, the reason I thought it was so cool is because not only would I learn the foundations of like how to create physical solutions, which I think is really neat and important, for a lot of the problems out there by learning things like fluid dynamics and like basic mechanics and then delving into those things. But I've learned more generally like a broader framework where or I would I would start to understand things that I approach through the lens of like how do we improve upon this? How do we optimize it? How do we create solutions that are you know, efficient and sustainable. And I think that's what appealed to me the most about engineering. That's really noble. And that's awesome to hear. <laughs> you have a very yeah. concrete reason. <laughs> um, noble. I like it. <laughs> Tell us why you were awarded most corrupt detective at B Lab Clue Night. Ooh, I think, you know, people were jealous of how good I was at the game, so they're trying to corrupt my name. How good you were at avoiding how at a, good I was, exactly. Exactly. How good you were at avoiding playing the actual games mm, um, and, and just trying to not gather that part, information. The, the how good I was at the game though, that, that part I agree with, yes. Just for context here, we have the actual detective winner who uncovered the case. 
What do you have to say for yourself? I don't have to say anything. My my you accomplishments my, speak for You stole my answer for the, <laughs> the murderer, and then he provided me no information, so I'll leave that up to your interpretation. It's the real corrupt. But it was fun. And Estella is mad. Estella is madly good at dodgeball. <laughs> I she, burrito dodgeball. Burrito dodgeball. She was, she was in the corner, outnumbered two to one, with the two two winning detectives against her. That's true. And she recovered and took us both out. My proudest moment, I have to say. And I did intramural dodgeball. Did you? So my does dodgeball that skills would be sick. No, I sucked. No, but I did. Yes, that does exist, and you should do it. It's I amazing. should. All right. Who do you want to write your obituary? Someone who loves me. Care to elaborate? Nope. <laughs> okay. Dolphins or koalas? Dolphins. Coffee or tea? Tea. I think coffee. I think you're wrong. I think that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. What's the best thing to happen to you today? I was trying to remember this earlier today. And I can't remember if I won this game of cornhole earlier today, but I think I won. So I think that was the best thing that happened to me today. Okay, so what was the worst thing to happen to you today? The worst thing, honestly, is this heat. I know. This heat is pretty brutal. But it's also nice. Like, I don't want to complain about it because it's going to be cold soon, and then I'm going to regret having said that. That is fair. Um. What is something surprising that has happened thus far in b -Lab? I think that there are a lot of surprising things that have happened. I think that the most surprising is perhaps how much I've learned um, from just you know the, the program brief b -Lab events and doing our customer interviews and how much I've learned about entrepreneurship and discovery um, and how to approach problems, um, which I think that's helpful in life to just think about customer discovery, think about like any problem I face in with the with the customer at the center of it and approaching all problems through through that that avenue. Like customer coming first. Yeah. As you can tell we we love B Lab. <laughs> I know. I'll pay you guys your twenty bucks. This. We're just getting paid a bunch of money for this, in case <laughs> yeah. you guys were wondering. So, no, I'm kidding. It's great. All right. I think that's all. Do you want to answer another question? You know, Un if you want. Unprepared question? Throw it at me. If you could I'm switch ready. lives with someone for a day, who would it be? Oh, man. Switch lives? I love my life, you know? I, I like my life. I'm thankful for where I am. And Everything, for a day. So. For a day. But what happens to me? Like, what happens to my body? It just like dies. On the no, that, let's say that person become, goes into your body. Oh crap! Okay, that's terrible. <laughs> so then I just choose someone to do damage control, like someone who did nothing. But like, how about my body's just sitting in timeout mode? It's like. But okay, fine. Who would you? Whose body would you love to be in? Maybe like. Maybe like Arnold Schwarzenegger, just to be like. <laughs> You know, just, just feel the power. Just feel the power. Lift up like a car or something. Yeah. Or like modern version of Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't even think that is. Like The Rock. The Rock. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Call up like. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> I'd call up like all the celebrities, throw a big razor. Yeah, it'd be fun. Well, that's all the questions we have. Well, if that's all the questions, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Oh, it's hot. So, it's so hot. So it's a terrible hot. idea. And it's not even sunny outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I'll I'll catch you guys later. Have a All wonderful right, Estella. afternoon. Stella, later. Later. See ya. Enjoy yourself on this hot day. <laughs> Bye. Bye.
Hi, Abby. Thank you so much for joining me over Zoom for your 73 questions. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Of course, it's my pleasure. So I was wondering whether you could tell us the very exciting but unfortunate reason why you couldn't be with us in person over the end of B-Lab. Yeah, so I have started a position at the MedStar in Georgetown University Hospital. Um, and my purpose for this is to really get up close and personal with our target population who are people with Parkinson's disease. I want to be talking with them, hearing about their experience, seeing what it's like with the doctor outside of the office and everything in between. Wow. Wow. That was a very conscious decision, I guess, then um, to be doing that. Yeah. And um, it's sad to hear that you're not actually skiing. Um, <laughs> as it looks like you I wish. are. <laughs> um, so what is your favorite sport? I'm curious. Is it skiing or? Uh, softball. Softball, interesting. Yeah. Did you did you play before Brown? Or? I played for six years, first base. Wow, yeah, that's impressive. Um, I have a question. What's the most interesting thing about aging and neurodegeneration, which I I hear you're interested in? Yes. So, I've kind of gotten involved in this through my classes, through research, through dance, a whole mm -hmm. bunch of things. Um, but it's something that happens to everyone in one form or another. Yeah. But there are still very real, very human ways we can address it. And it's it's something that we can all work through together. Interesting. So. Are you thinking more like medical solutions or more like like more like spiritual? What um honestly it could be a mix of both. Mm -hmm. Medicine, there is there are exercises and there's activities. So something that we've been looking at with follow-up is um boxing and these dance wow. classes that are made for people with Parkinson's disease um, and looking at how we can use these very just human activities to supplement patient treatment in the, in the hospital. Wow, that's interesting. Um, and I'll ask you a little bit more about your venture afterwards because the guys have spoken a bit about it too. But before then, what's one thing that people don't know about you? Uh, my middle name is Bean. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what's your, your full name is Abby Bean? Abigail Bean. Abigail yes. Bean. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the daughter of Mr. Bean. Uh, that would be, that would be an interesting episode. To come it would be an interesting ABC. episode. <laughs> um, yeah. How about, what's your dream country to visit? Um, Italy, definitely. Ooh. Food, the views, all of that. Yes. Uh, have you seen the new Disney movie, Luca? No, but I really want to. It's so cute. Oh It'll gosh. definitely make you want to go more. Yeah. <laughs> How about what's your current TV obsession? Um, I've been loving Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. I've watched. It's only been out for a couple of years, but I've watched it over and over again. It's yeah. so good. It's so good. How quickly they like make us fall in love with the characters and like all of them. Yeah. It's so well done. Exactly. I agree. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, so I think I was about 15 when I heard this. Mm -hmm. um, I am someone who, when I do something, I keep doing it and I keep going further and further. Um, but someone once told me that I won't be as effective in helping others unless I help myself first. And so if I'm not like fully satisfied or if there are like cracks in whatever I'm doing or however I'm feeling, I won't be able to help people as much as I want to. So. I really appreciate that. I mean, I, I understand people telling you not to spread yourself thin and it's, it's wise to put on your oxygen mask before you can help others. I really like that. Thank you. Um, and kind of on that note, what's the best way for you to rest and decompress and get in touch with yourself so you can best give to others? Uh, for me, it is definitely listening to music and dancing. Mm -hmm. Those are big things for me particular style of music or dance um music I listen to almost all kinds mm -hmm. dance I've I've been dancing since those little mommy and me classes <laughs> um so I I do kind of all kinds but tap is one of my favorites oh interesting yeah I'd love to see a routine one day <laughs> I'll share it with you <laughs> um how about what's the best gift you've ever received from someone um Oh gosh, I'm not wearing it right now, but mm. there's a bracelet that I got for a birthday gift one year and mm -hmm. it looks just like a bracelet that my great-grandfather had. Um, 
And it, I love it because it reminds me of my family, which I love to be connected to. Um, and especially him, he had this incredible sense of humor whenever we saw me had the biggest smile on his face. Um, and I'm trying to, I try to remember that wherever I go. That's lovely. Thank you for sharing that. Now, on a less sweet note, what is the weirdest word in the English language? Moist or beige. I, whenever I hear those words, I just kind of like, you know? Yes. I can't. <laughs> I think someone else actually said moist as well. Beige is a new one. Beige does not give cringe vibes to me, but I suppose there's something maybe it's the combination of the word and the color itself oh that's fair you know i yeah. i support that conclusion yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay how about your favorite smell oh gosh um i love the smell of like sauteed garlic wow i absolutely love it wow yeah. so you're not a vampire no definitely, definitely not, not a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> So you're stuck. <laughs> What were you about to confess? I don't know. <laughs> Keep big secret. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done the immersive Halloween room for you then oh instead of the ski yeah. lodge. Oh, we should have planned that. Yeah. So you're stuck on an island. You can pick one food to eat forever without getting tired of it. What would you eat? Potatoes. potatoes. I love like all kinds of potato. Yes. Is I your... like everyone always says like you are what you eat I, <laughs> I love potatoes yes you are a potato yeah <laughs> um is there a specific way you like your potatoes more um I mean fries like the 20 different kinds of fries that exist are always great my mm -hmm. grandma makes these really good roasted potatoes for all holidays mm. so that is always a big one in my book amazing So you mentioned songs and music as a way to decompress. Um, I wonder, do you have a song that you can listen to on repeat? Um, so it's not, it's not technically like a song, but mm -hmm. it's something that's included on one of the Lumineers albums. It's called mm -hmm. Patience. Mm -hmm. um, and like no lyrics, anything like that, but it is beautiful. And I have listened to it over and over again. Wow. Okay, I will make sure to, I, I'm literally copying it into my Google <laughs> search and I will search it. Yeah. Um, what are your favorite lyrics of all time? Might not be patience because there are no lyrics, but. Oh gosh, lyrics. Um, so I have, I have a wide range of music that I listen to. Um, Very nice. But there's this, Your Song by Elton John. Oh, of course. Um, like absolutely beautiful. And I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember the exact words, but um, I know it's not much, but it's the best I can do. My gift is my song, and this I'm one's for you. For you. Uh -huh. And I just, yeah. That's amazing. It's my mom's favorite song as well. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the well, classics. All of the classics. Um, what's the last piece of content that you consumed that made you cry? God. I watched so at Brown there's this class called Arts and Health mm -hmm. uh, up until recently it was called Artists and Scientists as Partners yeah. highly recommend to literally anyone and everyone um, and for a class we watched a documentary called Alive Inside which is about um, this man who brought tape recorders and CDs and cassette tapes to um, old age homes for people with dementia Mm -hmm. and it just showed all these people who had kind of taken a step back and distanced themselves from society and were having memory issues but as soon as they heard music that they knew from their pastor that they loved they were smiling they were up and dancing and oh my god I sobbed <sighs> I sobbed after watching it it was so good that sounds wonderful it really does so yeah. this is this documentary brought you sobbing Where do you go for a good laugh? Laugh. Okay. Um, Monty Python is mm -hmm. definitely a big one. Um, yeah. Monty Python and the Holy Grail is always a go-to <laughs> for me. Yeah. Um, and then I also get a lot of like funny animal videos on mm -hmm. on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I have one of like 
penguins and an owl with its head going like yeah if I need a little pick me up that's where I go interesting cool yeah do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions about your venture yeah definitely um so I'm just curious what inspired you to start your venture um so I've always had an interest in um the brain when it's not working properly and kind of what causes that where it stems from Mm -hmm. and as a dancer as a former athlete the body is also like this huge interest of mine and so Parkinson's as a progressive and currently incurable condition this was kind of an integration of the two things that I was most interested in the body and the brain when it's not functioning as it should And I really wanted to look into how I could help this population Mm -hmm. and just not, I know that everyone wants to find a cure, but even before then, there are ways for people to still go forward and enjoy their lives and find success in their time here on earth. Um, And I want to help them do that. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yep. And my last question for you and you can get back to your skiing. Um, What is a thing you're most excited about at this time in your life? Um, So I am a recent graduate from Brown and I'm taking a gap year while I applied medical school. And Mm -hmm. so I'm really excited. Part of my work this year is gonna be working with people who have Parkinson's assist in, in dance for Parkinson's disease classes, which will be incredible and where I'm in DC right now which is where my family is and I'm just really excited to have this time with everyone amazing it's the best of all worlds yes the <laughs> arts is. the science the medicine and the family yeah awesome well thank you so much Abby for your time yeah thank you of course bye-bye